urgent help needed. I'm going for an emergency golf lesson with Dan Whitaker. You might have seen last episode of the Break 75 at JCB. My game was in shatters. My golf swing completely deserted me. So I need to go and find a swing thought ready for this next Break 75. I need to work on quite a few things. Pitching, chipping, definitely priority. And also some fundamental key thoughts for my full golf swing as well. Let's get to it. Let's film a golf lesson. Come with me. Let me show you behind the scenes and hopefully Dan can make me a little bit better. Dan, I need your help. Can you help me? Definitely, 100% Pat. So mate, here's what we've been working on. So that left hand grip, getting it a bit stronger. That's helping you with that first move because obviously you were showing too many knuckles and that was getting the face too open. Then from there, first move, feeling like the club face is more closed. There we are, so now that's reference for you. Club face matches your spine. Then to the top, elbow down, feeling a bit more tucked. That's really helping you then with the path coming down because it's going to get you a little bit more neutral, perhaps even out to in. And on the way through, rotate really hard with the body. This then stops you from flipping with the hands and it's actually giving you really straight ball flight, making sure that the toe doesn't pass the heel. Okay, so left hand a little bit stronger, feeling like I'm going shutting the takeaway, elbow staying tight to my body, hard left. Come on. Feels better, it feels more connected. You know what, it's not quite there yet, but I think it will be very soon. Right, that's my full swing sorted, Dan. That's half the battle. We need to desperately look at my short game next, all right? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Okay, face just a bit more open, please, mate. Perfect. Yes. How soft is that coming out? Nice, that follow through is mega, mate. Oh, get in. I like that finish there, so much tighter. I love the connection with the left arm that you're getting now as well, in the follow through because of it. That's better. Oh, look at the height on that. Mate, that's different level, that. Okay, next thing, I've come further back from the green. This is my nemesis shot. This is kind of 40, 50 yards. Same idea, Dan? Exactly the same, yeah. Just a slightly longer fall through? Yeah. It's once it gets above sort of 50 yards that you'll be starting to move into a bit closer to your full swing. But here, it's going to be very similar to that. This strike was great. So just tuck, even if I just tuck this in a little bit? Just... Yeah, absolutely. That was sort of a little bit bottom groovy, but we had a lot of spin still that. Like. Yeah. The key is as long as you keep the body moving and you don't get the sternum going forward, so you start to want to dig it a bit, the strike will be great. That was good. That's one of the nicest pitch shots I've hit all <laughs> bloody year. Much better. Thanks, pal. Okay, nice little lesson there off Dan. Much needed, ready for my next break, 75, which is coming up. Uh, this week. So I thought I'm going to take the opportunity now to do what everyone should do after a lesson, a little bit of practice, try and bed in what I've just been taught. And then I'm hopefully, if I can get out, we're going to play four or five holes on the golf course here and kind of put it out into practice on the course as well. It's good though, interesting. A couple of little changes, not too complicated things that if I'm honest, I've worked on before. Um, and probably a question I might get asked a lot of, like Rick, you're a golf pro, surely you can fix yourself. but sometimes you're blind to your own swing. I've always found having another pair of eyes looking at my golf swing helps me because I, I end up becoming either too harsh on myself or too generous or I overlook things that I think are, are important and I underestimate the things that are kind of really relevant. Right, <clears throat> let's get hit in a few. Strong grip, shut the face, elbow down, swing left. Sounds easy, right? I've got to show you that, an ultra with a triple track found in the bucket. <laughs> I 
Where was this last week? Where was this swing when I needed it most? Hopefully, no. I'm bedding it in now, ready for the next upcoming break 75. These feel really nice. I'm hitting a four iron here. <clears throat> They're coming out like bullets. Like just really nice ball flights. <sighs> Golf, eh? What a game. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the problematic one. Ah, oh, it's not there just yet. Aye. Okay, not quite got it with driver just yet. Making these changes when you're trying to swing with the big stick is always a bit more challenging. I think it's close. It's just not there yet. I'm causing a few more left shots, which isn't my favourite shot with driver. But what I've, what's been happening at the moment since so we've been out playing, I'm finding that. My natural shot that goes a little bit left is there, but I'm also starting to see shots that kind of creep right. And when it's still on the team, you don't quite know which direction it's going to go and it's very difficult. This at the moment is making me feel like I'm going to hit it left. But if I can just get that sensation of trying to hold it off a little bit, I reckon I can find them a lot straighter. It's not there yet, but I don't think it'll take me long to crack it. Like that. That's the one. Oh yes, now we're rocking. That's that, just that little bit of a different feeling with driver, but that's okay. I can work on that. Yes, yes. That's what I need 14 times and that'll do the trick very nicely. Okay, so as Dan mentioned in the little lesson, I've definitely lacked confidence on my short game recently. It's not been where I've wanted it to be at all. And you might have seen from some of the last break 75s, I've actually just duffed a few, like quite badly, quite embarrassingly badly. So that was a much needed little couple of tips, just keeping that arm connected, letting the face open and just being able to turn through it. So I'll just spend a little 10 minutes or so before I go out and play, hopefully just fine tune that in and hopefully then it works out on the golf course. It was all going so well. And the last three or four have just been absolutely terrible. It takes a thousand good shots to build confidence. It takes one bad one to shatter it to pieces. And that's kind of what's happened. Let's try and get it, try and get it back again. Okay. Let's go with that. It's not perfect yet, but it's better. All right, guys. So I'm going to go out and play five holes. Uh, I'm going to really try and implement these changes Dan said. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but hopefully I should play a little bit better. But if not, it'll be a good little practice. I think sometimes, again, when you've had a lesson, you've been on the driving range, it seems easy there. Then bringing it out on the golf course is a different animal. I must admit, one of the hardest shots in the golf to hit is first tee straight after a lesson. It's just like trusting it. Let's hope I can do it. Right. That's a shank. <laughs> oh. Hardest shot in golf. The one straight after a shank. I said the tee shot after a lesson, but it's wrong. It's the shot after a shank. Well, that was nice. Just as it starts hailstoning, that was a very nice little shot. So I don't know what's just happened, but this bad weather's just rolled in. It's like rain, sleet, snow, whatever. Now, if I was really, really dedicated, I should be out there grinding, but I'm not. I'm taking shelter until it blows over because I want to get better, yes, but I don't want to get better when it's chucking it down with the rain. <laughs> Okay, we're going for it. It's not stopped raining, but work needs to be done. Ow. 
Whoa. Ay, ay, ay. Right, so that is four holes. Just kind of trying to bed it in, trying to get these ideas of the swing that I've just taken from the lesson on the range and then here on the golf course. It's, uh, it's mixed at the moment. It's not quite there yet. Some promising signs, but a few ropey shots as well. So, last hole I'm going to play, par five, round the corner. I'm just going to play one ball. Can we finish off and try and make a birdie? Yeah, that will do. Oh, Rick. We've got a chance for birdie, everybody. So all in all, today's been fun. It's been a much needed kind of uh, assessment of my game. I feel like at the moment I'm, I'm having some good rounds, but I'm mixing it with some terrible rounds. I need to become more consistent. And hopefully with today, a few little changes, a bit of practice, a bit of me time, we can get that fraction more consistent. Hopefully you're enjoying the Break 75 guy. Don't forget, guys, don't forget, 4 p.m. Friday, new episode coming out every week. Um, and we've got some cracking golf courses lined up. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more passionate about it. I didn't think I was going to do, but I'm getting a little bit more, you know, I, wa I want to do well. I want to play better. Right. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, smash like. Thanks to Dan for all of his time today. If you've actually not watched the podcast clips or listened to Dan, make sure you check those out. And to finish with a birdie on the last. Thought that was going to be a lovely ending. Guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.